day three and we're off to Mungo National Park today. So just a few kilometers north of uh, Mildura is our turn off to go on to Arampo Road which goes to Willandra Lakes, the World Heritage Area and mainly Mungo National Park. We've got about 25 kilometers of normal road with tar and bitumen for 88 kilometers of dirt road which would be interesting especially since we've only got a two-wheel drive MUX. So we've come across a new kangaroo on the road. Ah, oh, there it goes. Yeah. Hi Skippy! <laughs> Just bounding away. Dust storm out there, must be somebody coming. We're driving about 80, 80 k's an hour. Most of the road hasn't been too bad. A few corrugations here and there for the all-terrain tyres but otherwise it's been fairly good. We haven't been sliding around anywhere. Where are we kids? Mungo National Park. Yeah, we've made it all the way. How was the ride? Very long. Very long? What was you? Oh, you got a fly to here. The fly's got you. Put the sunscreen up and get a bit of food, yeah? What do they store in there? That's hot, is it? Yeah, the metal is hot in the sun. You gotta be careful. So these are the old fashioned water tanks, aren't they? But back in the old days, they used to have to store the waters somewhere. So they built these holes in the ground. I don't know how. To capture all the water. Nowadays, what have they got? Water tanks. Uphill water tanks, just like over there. And the sewers. Once they shear the sheep, where does the wool go? On here. It goes on here? And what do they do here? They pick out all the rocks. What do you think that does? The weigh. Weighs what? The weighs the wool. They weigh the wool, don't they? Yeah. Work out how much they're making. 
We're about to go on the Mungo National Park self-drive tour. It's about 70 kilometers around. This one's a bit rougher than the other one. Not very graded. And it is giving the car a bit of a shake. But you do see a bunch of other people in different types of cars driving through. I don't know why we don't see any others. You're on the bushes. Now as you start driving from the visitor center, you start seeing on the horizon the wall of China. And as you slowly start getting closer and closer, it just teases you more and more. Because this is the view that we're getting in front of our car. So as you can see, it spreads. It's on now. So right now we are going to um like um walls of China. Um here you can see writing. Oh. And there's multiple bits of it and that was just the first one out of four. Yeah. Here we are walking out to the walls of China in the Mungo National Park where we're going along the boardwalk here. This is our first major stop off along the the loop route. Now out here, you wouldn't believe it, but the ground doesn't look, looks fairly soft, but it's actually very, very firm underneath. And you can see why it would be a dry lake bed at some point in time. To think that this whole area all around us could have been lake. And this was obviously the earth embankment that erosions happen over time. is closed. Other place. And then of course Africa over here. 
And then the one fight. The worst one. It's crazy to think that all this area you, that you're seeing now used to be a giant lake. And what we're standing on is obviously the embankment at some point that's eroded away. So this lake used to be 15 meters in depth, but now there's nothing. Just a flat plains with small little shrubs, mini trees starting to grow. Here I am in a mini twister. I just had my hat blown off. And there it goes, a mini twister. I don't know if you can see it, but it's, I'm right in the middle of it at the moment. It's coming back to me. Here it is right here. twister see it that was crazy still going around look at it I don't know if you can see it hopefully you can but there it is right there That's where we're going, aren't we? Yeah. Alright, let's go check it out. Let's see what's out here. What do you think is going to be out here? Um, what do you think? There's a digger over there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. What do you think he's doing? Why do you think he does that? Um, to make paths? Yeah, to make paths and roads, just like we went on. So they might fix up what we just went on. So these here are earth tanks. And they're used as a primary means of collecting and storing water in areas that have low rainfall. So the water must come down and then get stored into this area. Earth tanks also create management problems in national parks. Why? At this point of the walk, we are now out of the lake bed and starting to hit what used to be the shoreline. So all that down there used to be the lake of Lake Mungo. They brought the rabbits in, the rabbits ate all the natural vegetation. So now all that's left is this and they're trying to conserve what's left, especially this dark um, ground cover because it helps keep the moisture in the soil and they're trying to keep the moisture in the soil so that they can grow back the native vegetation. This one. There's some kangaroos just there now. Two of them. I wonder if they're the same ones under the tree. They're look, both looking at us. Look. Isn't it amazing? Look at them. Oh my god. Thank God. 
helping and protecting her young one. And here we are, we've made it back at the car. And there's no one else even in the car park. Did you have fun, Melika? Yep. Yeah, what was your favorite part? I've seen the kangaroos. Seen the kangaroos? Yep. What was your favorite part, Nikolai? Having cool air. <laughs> cool air in the car. Uh -huh. Elizabeth, what was your favorite part? Um, the walls of China. My favourite part was probably the, might have been the Red Cliffs lookout or whatever it was called, the second section we stopped at. It was a bit closer to being able to be at the actual dunes themselves and being able to take photos. And actually while I was there, a little mini dust devil came up and whipped my hat off me and almost blew over the camera as I was trying to take photos, so that was pretty awesome. Eight to 70 kilometers we finally hit the bitumen roadway again which is fantastic so no more bumpiness but I must say what's this pillow made out of because Elizabeth's been asleep the whole time and well, the rest of that pillow hasn't has protected her head from bouncing up and down so or Nikolai's stuffed toy actually it's not even a pillow it's Nikolai's stuffed toy but somehow Nikolai's stuffed toy has kept her asleep. While well, these two in the back seat are just chilling out doing their own thing. <laughs> 